Hello, I am Aviral Namdev and this is the fifth video in the series of control and coordination. In the last video, if you have seen it, we have done the human brain part, how does it work and we have also seen endocrine and exocrine glands present in the body. Now we will study endocrine glands in detail, what are the different kinds of glands that you have and how do they function in the body. We already know endocrine glands are those glands that do not have a duct to release whatever chemical they do into the site where they require. That is why they simply release their secretions that are also called as hormones. They simply release these hormones into the bloodstream and then blood carries this hormone everywhere in the body. What are the different kinds of glands you have? The first one is you have a pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is also called as master gland sometimes. Why? Because it not only produces its own hormone, which is called the growth hormone, generally written as GH, growth hormone, but it also stimulates the other glands to perform their function when they are required to. That's why it's called it is called the master gland. Okay, now what is its hormone? Growth hormone. What does growth hormone do? Let's see. Growth hormone, as the name itself suggests, is responsible for the growth and development of the body. Growth and development of the body. Suppose a person has lower concentrations of growth hormone from its pituitary gland. He might not be grown as it should be and he might sometimes be called as dwarf because his growth hasn't been normal. Similarly, if somebody has higher concentrations of growth hormone, he, he might become a giant. Huh? What do you mean by a giant? Somebody overgrown. You have, must have seen the great Khali, isn't it? The disorders are called as dwarfism in case of dwarf people and giantism in case, in case of the uh, uh, overgrown people. So that's pituitary gland for you. Then we proceed to the next one. The next gland that you have is thyroid. Thyroid gland is here, is here in the throat. This gland produces a hormone called hormone called thyroxine. What does it do? It is it regulates the metabolism of carbohydrate, fats, and proteins. What do you mean by metabolism? It's kind of digestion, kind of breakdown of these molecules. So this regulates metabolism. There is a very important question in thyroid gland. A very, very important question. Question number one. What is important for the release of thyroxine? That we must have proper amount of iodine in the body. Iodine. So, you must have seen when we take salt, it is written iodized salt. Why is it iodized? Generally, it is not iodized. But iodine is mixed in for the reason that it is important for our bodies because it helps us release thyroxine. One. In case a person has diet deficient in iodine, he may not have this thyroxine produced in the required amount, that is one. The other thing is, he will develop a disease that is called as goiter. Goiter. I would request you to type goiter on Google and see images. You will find the throat is enlarged like this. So, deficiency of iodine causes goiter. I hope you get that. This is a very important question from the board's point of view. So, we have these two glands now. One was Pituitary that produces growth hormone. Remember, pituitary is master gland, principal gland because it also stimulates all other glands to perform their functions. And then thyroid for producing thyroxine, thyroxine hormone. It regulates the metabolism, carbohydrate, fat and protein. And it requires that iodine is there for the release of thyroxine. If iodine is not there, 
this will not be released one and secondly you will have a disease called boy then you have the third one that is called as pancreas 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 is right below actually behind the stomach what pancreas do is pancreas has two functions to do actually one is it produces pancreatic juice that contains a lot of enzymes which are helpful in digestion of food but digestion of food occurs at stomach or intestine so pancreas sends this pancreatic juice that contains enzymes to the small intestine where they require but wait a minute glands that have duct will not produce hormones they will produce enzymes so pancreas has duct why are we studying it here it must be studied under the heading exocrine gland why are we studying it in endocrine glands there's a reason pancreas is the only gland in the body that is exocrine as well as endocrine that means it has duct it produces enzymes and it sends the enzyme to the site where they require via pancreatic duct that is small intestine sends to apart from that it also produces hormones that is directly released into the blood so pancreas is a dual gland you know it is endocrine exocrine growth pancreas also produces a hormone called insulin and this is one hormone everybody knows actually what is insulin what happens is when you eat food the food is digested after digestion the carbohydrate is taken into the blood and the blood sugar increases now there must be an optimum value of blood sugar in the human body if the sugar increases beyond that limit we'll say hyperglycemia has happened it might occur it might uh, like harm the person it might uh, lead to uh, blood hemorrhage and, like, and things like that brain hemorrhage and things like that apart from that if the blood glucose level goes below the prescribed value then it will be a condition called hypoglycemia that will also harm you so the amount of blood glucose must be within limits in the human body what happens is if glucose is being absorbed into the blood who will control who will tell the blood this is enough you don't have to absorb any more pancreas how that's also a question how would pancreas get to me what happens is since pancreas is also a part of the human body as all other parts of human body get blood blood also reaches pancreas when the blood reaches the pancreas the pancreas gets to know what is the blood level if a sugar level in blood if the sugar level is beyond the prescribed limit pancreas starts producing insulin this insulin acts actually it checks the value the, the amount of sugar we will say it checks the sugar that's what insulin does now if pancreas is producing insulin blood sugar will go down now when blood is pumped to the pancreas it gets to know such as the blood sugar has gone down okay fine is it still uh, above the limit yes it still it is it will again produce more insulin and then if it keeps producing insulin blood sugar level will come down to the prescribed limit what if pancreas keeps producing insulin even then if it does if it does what will happen blood sugar level might go below the prescribed limit if that happens then then in that case pancreas is another hormone that's called as glucagon glucagon that is glucose gone come on yeah so what it does is when the blood sugar level goes below the prescribed limit then it will produce another enzyme another hormone called glucagon that will enhance the amount of sugar in blood thus pancreas can do both it can check the amount of blood sugar it can reduce it or it can enhance it as well with these two hormones also understand an important point here see at the moment i am teaching a camera so my teaching may not be as good for the reason i do not have any response from anybody i'm just watching the camera and teaching you but when in a live class 
when you're there in live class and I'm teaching. When I'm teaching live people, students, when I speak, they tend to give their facial expressions differently. If they are understanding it, they'll have different expressions. If they are not understanding, they'll have different expressions. So if I see that most people have an expression that they are not understanding, what will I do is I will emphasize that point more so that they also understand. So I am getting a live feedback from there and hence acting according to the feedback. That is obviously not possible in a camera class. Why am I saying all this? It's because pancreas has a live feedback. It is producing insulin to check if it requires more insulin to be produced. It has blood coming in. If insulin is produced little more, blood sugar level has gone down. It gets to know from the blood coming in. It produces glucagon. So this is a live feedback. Insulin paida kiya, pata ki blood kitna ho gaya, sugar kitna ho gaya. Abhi aur chahiye, aur diya, aur diya. That's how it's having a live feedback mechanism. And hence pancreas is able to produce the proper amount of insulin or glucagon. And there's another important point at this point. I believe you all know that diabetes is a disease in which people are not able to control blood sugar. Why is that? Because their pancreas sometimes is not capable of producing the proper amount of insulin. That is why you must have heard these people who are diabetic, they are given insulin from outside in the form of an injection so that they can control their blood sugar. Okay, fine. We proceed ahead now. So we have three glands, pituitary, thyroid and pancreas. What more? What more? Remember I taught you adrenal, adrenal gland also yesterday or in that video? What is adrenal gland? Where is it produced? Where is it present? Adrenal gland is right at the top of the kidney. They are, they are pair of glands. There are two adrenal glands actually. And they produce the hormone called as adrenaline. This hormone is released to counter anxiety. Anxiety of any kind. You are very afraid. You are very excited. When you are anxious, you know, when you are in a little that is when it is ready. Anxiety. Yaad kari mene kya bataya the example. When you see a snake suddenly, what happens is, suddenly when you see the snake, your eyes tell the brain, I've seen a snake, the brain tells the adrenal, release adrenaline. When adrenaline hormone is released into the blood, what it does, it has many targets. One, it goes to the heart and tells, beat faster, I need more oxygen. It goes to the lungs and tells, uh, like breathe faster, I need more oxygen. It then changes the blood supply from internal or digestive glands or skin. No, they are not giving more blood now. Where the blood supply is switched to, it is switched to muscles because you might require to move very fast, you might require to run very fast. Muscles will need more energy. So, see, so many targets all together. That is what adrenaline hormone does. Then you have another set of in, in case of uh, human males, we have testis. Actually, testis is singular. Since there are two, they are called as testis. Testis are located right below the penis in a human male body. What is the role of testis? What does it do? You see, when you see a 7, 8 years old boy, or when you see a 14, 15 year old boy, there are not many differences in them. What are those differences? The differences are quite visible also. You can see fringes of moustaches and beards coming on those faces of 15 year old boy. You would see them, they are more conscious of their bodies. You would see that they want to go to gym, they want to be muscular and other things also. All that, all those changes that are happening when you are attaining puberty are called as secondary sexual characteristics. The cracking of voice also, the voice becomes more manly. So all that is happening because testes are producing a hormone called testosterone. Testosterone. That hormone brings about secondary sexual characteristics in a human male. And the same thing happens in human females since they have ovaries, they produce estrogen. That brings secondary sexual characteristics in human females. When you compare a body of a 6-year-old girl to a 14-15-year-old girl, there are visible changes in the body. 
apart from being more conscious, apart from being other things. There are not many physical changes that occur. Why are those physical changes occurred? Because their blood has concentrations of estrogen in the body. Thus you see, this chemical system of coordination in the body works in uh, along with the electrochemical system, that is nervous system in the body, both work together for a complete control and coordination of a human body. I am sure you must have understood the roles of glands in the body, isn't it? In the next video, I shall be talking about the plant's control and coordination system. But before that, I have to remind you to like the video, to subscribe to the channel so that you get to know when more videos are uploaded and to put in comments. In the comment section, there are two things that you must do. I have seen people just put in their email IDs. Understand that teaching a camera is not an easy thing. So I would want you to give me your perception of the class. How well have you liked? How, what did you not like? So that we can have an exact idea what you think about the class and then the email ID for the homeworks and the sheets that are to be shared. That will make it all.